And welcome back to another episode of the Cool Your Jets podcast. I am PJ Clark, joined alongside the great Michael Nadia. Uh, ben Blessington has a lot to celebrate after a stellar J.K. Dobbins performance against the Raiders. Uh, I don't. We have a little bit to celebrate, but not a lot. <laughs> but, but Aaron Rodgers is alive. We Aaron, have that. Aaron Rodgers survived. I don't. I don't know. The morning after, Michael, how are you, how are you doing? How are we feeling? I don't I don't know, man. I I'm not doing too great. I was not taking it well last night. I mean, I've tried to improve my game watching maturity over the years, but I quit twice last night. I quit in the third quarter at some point when they um I don't know there's there's at one point they got stopped on fourth down, I think. Then I came back again. Then I quit again. I was not taking it well. And and like you were saying before we started, I know it's not that bad. It's the 49ers. Rodgers looked great, and he's healthy. Like, it's going to be all right. I still think they're going to be 4-1 and one in uh, four weeks' time. But with that being said, it's, it's just so underwhelming that you had all this hype, and you go into this game, you're on the national spotlight, and you even started off really well, only for it to go down as just another classic – listless jets blowout it's, it's just disappointing so not the end of the world i you know looking at it logically here the next morning i've settled down i'm like all right i think it's gonna be fine but at the same time like man you really would have just loved to have a more competitive start to the season than that yeah that's the thing for me is that i don't i i, I mean we went on here we were we we said this on thursday that you know we both thought it was going to be a loss that yeah. we were not i i was not expecting to win this game i just wanted to make it out of this healthy it was the way it happened for me was it was kind of demoralizing i just right. didn't expect the defense to be terrible like that that was never on my radar i thought the offense might kind of start slow and they did i was worried about how rogers would look and thought he looked pretty well obviously we'll break it all down but the defense just complete no show was just not on my radar at all i mean eight consecutive scoring drives is it's terrible that's the only word you could use to describe it and and it is not gonna fly i think it's the best eight hundred thousand dollars the son reddick's ever spent in his life yeah <laughs> um because that guy should get a call from Woody Johnson today, tomorrow, whatever. I want him in Nashville. Uh, I mean, I wanted him in Santa Clara, but I, we need him in Nashville now after that. Just you, you tweeted it out this morning, you know, running three man fronts of Michael Clemens and Jalen Holmes and Will McDonald is not going to get it done, folks. It's not going to happen. Brady and, McGregor was yeah, part of that as well. <laughs> like it's, it's not going to happen. It's not, not against the best team in football last night. Tennessee's got a pretty defense, pretty decent offensive line that they've invested a lot of high picks into. The, the tackles looked really good for them against the Bears. Peter Skaronsky was a top 10 pick at guard last year. I know Tennessee blew that game and looked horrible doing so, but, you know, home opener, 2 0 and 1 teams, you never know what side the desperation is going to be on. I thought the off the Jets offense looked good, but the defense was just it was the only word I could really use is demoralizing. And like you said, this is not the end of the world. The schedule upcoming is is pretty easy. You have a real shot at four and one. I feel like you have to be three and two coming out of this next stretch here, but man, that sucked. Yeah, there, there's no other way to put it. I mean, it, again, it's just the way that it happened. Even even if I figured this was kind of a rough defensive matchup for them. It's like they're physically demolished. It wasn't really – and Kyle Shanahan did a good job attacking the Jets where they're weak, um, which I think the Jets tried to do on offense but not successfully. But the reason San Francisco was so dominant was they just pushed the Jets around. It's that simple. And I took a few looks into the run defense film this morning, and like they attacked the edges – they got Michael Clemens pinned inside. They got Will McDonald pinned inside. Jermaine Johnson did not set the edge well in this game. Um, then when they went up the middle, Javon Kinlaw is getting pushed around. Jalen Holmes has his back to the play sometimes because he's trying to spin and then gets stuck. It's It was just gross to look at. It was a physical manhandling through a unit that is billed to be one of the strengths of this team. But 
with three of their five best pass rushers from last year off the team with Huff, JFM, and Quentin Jefferson, and Hassan Reddick on the couch, this is a shell of the defensive line we saw the last two years, and it looked like it in San Francisco. So that is the one issue from this game that is certainly a concern going forward. I don't think you're overreacting if you're worried about that defensive line and if you think Hassan Reddick's leverage increased after this game. I think those things are legitimate. Uh, other issues, I think, despite as you know how disappointing they may have been, I think – won't be as problematic against the Titans, against the Patriots. Uh, so there are other parts of this team that didn't work last night that I think are going to be just fine. But the one thing that you come out of this game certainly feeling concerned about is that defensive line. And I think it's not just the run defense, but the pass rush as well, because they couldn't get close to Purdy for most of the night, especially outside of Quinn and Williams. I mean, all these guys that you're banking on to make up for Reddick not being there, to make up for the guys you lost, they didn't show anything last night. I mean, Will McDonald, quiet game. Tack McKinley, our guy. Unfortunately, he's just Tack McKinley. That's he, I said that to one like of my it. friends last night. I was like, yeah. I can't believe that I have to be mad at Tack McKinley. I can't believe it's gotten to the point where yeah. I'm like mad. Like at we're Tack expecting McKinley. things. This guy was a tryout, and he played <laughs> forty, I think thirty-one to forty percent of the snaps in this game. It's not pretty right now, and I don't. To keep it on the Reddick point, like I don't want to sit here and say Joe Douglas go wild and cave to his twenty eight million dollar per year demands or whatever it is. Like I don't know what the solution is or the number or anything like that. And I'm not saying the Jets should be desperate and just give him whatever he wants. But at the same time, it is clear that this team really suffers without him. The talent just isn't there. And like you said, Tennessee this week, a team that I. I think the Jets will be and should be, but they have offensive line talent, arguably even more than San Francisco does. If you're looking one through five with the investments that they've made. So that's not a team that I think, especially still on the road that you're just going to go in there. And suddenly now all these guys are going to feast in a way that they couldn't against the Niners because that Niners O line is not great. Tony, Tony Pollard is licking his chops. Look at it. He is. You look at that. Every team, the Patriots the next week, they have already shown they know how to pound the ball up the middle on the Jets. Uh, so, yeah, Tennessee next week. I don't think, this, you know, J.C. Latham, Skaronsky, they signed Lloyd Cushenberry. They've got pieces there. Uh, the San Francisco offensive line, as good of a schemer as Kyle Shanahan is, the pure one-on-one talent outside of Trent Williams, it's not amazing over there. The Jets thought, easily could have Pooney, had a great game. I thought Pooney looked pretty good, but then you take stock did, of yeah. like he's going against Solomon Thomas, and it's like, right. Right, how how good is he really? But I did thought Pooney Pooney was a standout for me. But like you said, it's it's just I will give. I can't believe I'm saying this. I will give the Jets somewhat of the benefit of the doubt that if I had to pick one position group to be bad in Week One that I could trust would get better throughout the season. Given the history of defensive line development, I, I would almost have to be the defensive line, but this is, you're starting at zero here outside of Quinn and Williams. And you have to get Watts, McGregor, McKinley, Leonard Taylor, Jalen Holmes. If he sticks around kind of thing, like any of these guys, you would just have to get them to a, a playable spot, which by week 18 probably is, at least one of them is going to be decent based on the track record that we have here. Week two, week three, week eight. I don't, I don't know what that looks like. And, and last night was just terrible. You mentioned they had, they had three sacks. Two of them were, were just covered sacks where Purdy went down behind the line, essentially that were not really even one sack. Michael Clements got the only real sack of the night, which again, I, think honestly was a coverage sack but the jets had three yeah, guys he was on, in on that too. Yeah. yeah like i i it was the pass rush was bad i think the run defense was worse obviously we thought the run defense was going to be at least a little bit of a problem and we thought oh you know we can manufacture pass rush not last night remains to be seen if if that's a possibility again this is you know jets lost a two possession game that was not a two possession game, but whatever we'll call it a two possession game to the best team in football. There are worse things that could have happened 
I just think this revealed more problems than I think we had expected going into this game. And again, it's not the end of the world at all. It's an NFC loss. It's a week one loss. Again, the schedule is incredibly easy coming up. I just, I think, I don't know. Like even the secondary, I don't think really played well. Like you, Michael Carter got beat a couple times. The whole sauce thing was weird. Again, this is a top flight off uh, offense that you played. But Did we get an answer on that in the post game? He just had to catch, the sauce? he had to catch his breath, is what Sala said. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't entirely know what that means. I, maybe this is a discussion that we could just go into now for two seconds here. Do you think this changes the preseason strategy? Because I think, honestly, I think everybody looked a little sluggish. And, and if Sauce really was out of shape and had to catch his breath in the second quarter, like, I don't know, maybe give him a drive or two next year. I mean, I thought going into this game, the fact that they went really hard in training camp was going to help them. Because, you know, apparently they doubled their reps compared to the previous year. And, you know, some of the Niners players, McCaffrey ended up not playing. Trent Williams worked his way back in late. Um, Ayuk was apparently on a limited snap count. Yeah, he, he kind of look looked it. He had a rough game. Yeah. So I thought that was going to be an edge for the Jets. But in some ways, yeah, they were suckers, especially the way the defensive line was getting pushed around. But also on the other side, to bring it to the offense, the offensive line's run blocking, Horrific. major disappointment Horrific. in this game. Major disappointment. I mean, Next Gen Stats had Brees for negative 10 yards before contact. That is not what you were hoping for with this unit, especially in this game. I thought that was their best matchup. I mean, the same thing we saw with the Jets D-line against the Niners offense should have happened the other way around because these are the same schemes with the same philosophies and strengths and weaknesses – and their interior defensive linemen are the same in terms of pass rush first, run defense later. Uh, but the Jets couldn't exploit that because the run blocking was just not good in this game. So that needs to be better going forward for sure. Yeah, I, I, I thought the pass pro was actually pretty good. Yeah. I, I, was, I was really happy with it. It felt like Rodgers had time and space. and Yeah, and for sure. You, you saw a little bit of what he was able to do. But the run blocking was just again it was demoralizing like we were excited to see what kind of the the gap scheme would look like and it just it never felt they had push at all it was always like the stark difference between the Niners guys always fell forward like even if Jordan Mason was was stopped behind the line a handful of times and always managed to get two yards and Brees is just Brees has nowhere to go at any time and and half of that again is because this is the most talented team in the league and and Fred Warner was amazing last night as always yes. like I, I I mean there's only so much you can do but man you just you uh, you want to talk about all the investment that Tennessee has made on the offensive line we've made more we yes. we have poured everything into this offensive yep. line for good reason and and it was just the push was just not there last night and I think a lot of that, I mean, it's it's easy to just come on here and yell about the play calling, but I was not entirely thrilled. I with don't that really. I don't have a ton of issues with the play calling. I mean, I think it got stale. I think I think yeah. when you have this team and you just come out for the entire first quarter going run run pass, it's like, all right, dude, come on, like we gotta figure this out to some extent here. And there was a lot of kind of trying to run Brees off tackle, which wasn't working like and to me that wasn't an adjustment that was made it was just like always trying to get Brees outside Brees outside Brees outside when he had nowhere to go he had nowhere to go and and you know maybe sometimes it's just not your night and last night it was not the offensive lines night in the run game it was not the Jets night overall but I I don't know like I uh, again the defense just being terrible came out of nowhere and the run blocking was something that we were excited about and was completely non-existent last night. Yeah. I do think on the positive side, the pass protection was really good. I think if there's a positive outside of Aaron Rodgers, it's that because I mean, third and long plays, they held up really well and gave him some good pockets and allowed him to hit some of those early completions to Garrett. 
Um, there was the one sack that Rodgers took, but that ended up being the only sack the Jets gave up all night. And, you know, for the most part, it was really good. His pressure rate turned out to be uh, 27%, which was lower than all but one game the Jets had last year. So they're already, even in this, you know, hellish game against on the road against a great pass rush, still the pass protection was more efficient than it was pretty much in any game last year. So that is a huge positive going forward. And, you know, to keep it positive, I guess, for now, Aaron Rodgers, I thought, was, you know, as, as good as he could look yep. with, you know, 167 yards, 21 attempts, one touchdown in a 13-point loss because I really liked the way he got them to the line quickly and was commanding the offense, looking for his matchups. Like, you know, we talked about all offseason, can Rodgers work around Nathaniel Hackett? And I think in this game, we saw a clear example that he can through the way that he was able to get to the line yep. and get to a lot of those plays. Cause I feel like a lot of the positive stuff they did came off of a check from Aaron Rodgers. It was most of those plays where he was at the line quickly reading the defense, changing everything up and found his matchup. So uh, having that ability at quarterback, I think decreases the need to have a great play caller, but at the same time, you, you do need a better plan and you do need better adjustments. That's where the coordinator comes in. And it, it didn't feel like they had those because as much as we want to complain about the defense, the offense didn't do much of anything either. And part of that was the run game, not really finding different ways to mix it up. Like, could they have gotten Braylon Allen and Isaiah Davis in there and mix it up, give them different looks, throw in, you know, some jets. They didn't try any end arounds, jet sweeps, things like that. Could they have mixed it up more? Um, possibly. So I think that's where Hackett could come in, you know, the run game design, throwing different curveballs in the middle of the game. But on the positive side, I think you really saw how much of an impact Rodgers can make when it comes to just being at the line of scrimmage and setting things up. And then throwing the ball, I thought he looked great. Um, most of his incompletions in this game were dropped or just thrown away. He was very accurate. The velocity looked really good. Uh, and then moving around, like, look, we talked about it last podcast. He's he's never going to, to look this season – like prime Aaron Rodgers, he's going to look 40 years old, but he has enough to get the job done. And, you know, hopefully in the future, you can give him more than 20 minutes of time of possession, more than 21 passes. And I think with that, he could do a lot of damage because he looked really solid in this game. I thought. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought honestly, like I wasn't expecting a, a ton. Like I, I thought that, they were going to try to run the ball a lot and take as much of this off of the shoulder off of his shoulders as they could. And for what happened, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm beyond thrilled. Yeah. I, I thought it was great. Like I, he, I thought he definitely early on the first couple of drives was pretty ginger. I thought he was kind of afraid to get hit. I was glad we got the first sack out of the way early. And I just, I don't like he's Aaron Rodgers, man. Like it's still there. The the hard count is like that was uh, obviously was the highlight of the night. But like yeah. I, the fact that that happened is just like all right, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. He's still got it, and like it's weird. Like I, we were getting smoked. I know a bunch of people said this on Twitter. I think you tweeted something about it. Like. It was what twenty six to seven. Yep, and yeah. I, the game was not over because yeah. we have Aaron Rodgers. Like, and it's 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 a completely foreign feeling that we've never had before, and and that's cool. And I'm excited about it, and I'm ready. I thought, obviously, uh, I mean, it kind of turned into a meme that only Brees and Garrett touched the ball for the first two and a half quarters. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, that is not a good way to live. Obviously Mike Williams will get worked in more and more throughout the year. Uh, after we both wanted Alan Lazard sent to prison on the third play of the game, yeah. I actually thought Alan <laughs> Let's Lazard not reveal the texts that were sent. After that I thought play. Alan Lazard <laughs> actually looked pretty good. Um, I, I making contested catches. The catch for on the, on the hard count was a great play. He made multiple contested catches to the sideline. I was pretty happy with Alan Lazard. Um, 
I don't like he's Aaron Rodgers, man. He came out there and he looked like Aaron Rodgers. And to me, maybe the most important part is that you if I don't know if you watched the the Pittsburgh Atlanta game on Sunday, Aaron Rodgers looks 15 times better than Kirk Cousins. Does. Yeah. Like like Kirk Cousins can't plant. Kirk Cousins can't move. Kirk Cousins had to adjust his footwork because of the Achilles. And Aaron is just out there zipping it. And were there a couple times where he kind of threw it off his left foot and did not exactly plant? I remember the one time, I think it was on a third down, Garrett over the middle, where he literally just threw it off of one leg and did not plant his right foot at all. Was I just a little, did that give me a momentary sense of panic? Absolutely. But watching Cousins versus Rodgers, is night and day. And yeah, Aaron had had, you know, th- three or four weeks more of rehab time because it happened earlier in the season, but he's also five years older. And it it was genuinely night and day between those two guys from the speed bridge Achilles recovery versus the the normal recovery to what those guys looked like in week one. And that at least gives me more hope that, you know, things are going to be okay even further into the future here. Yeah. I mean, the first Aaron Rodgers experience, I thought even in the midst of everything that was going on, we really got to experience what it's like to have a real quarterback. I mean, like you mentioned when the jets were trailing, usually when it's 26 to seven, you know, for a fact it's over. And, and look, I think we all kind of knew that the way the defense was playing or most. Well, that's the that. thing we, we couldn't get a stop. So it didn't really it's matter. It's a very but, weird feeling to be like, well, we have the quarterback who can make this comeback, but I don't think we could stop them. It's not something that we've felt a lot, but it is interesting to know, like, hey, if the defense does step it up, I kind of feel like Aaron Rodgers has three more touchdown drives in him in the second half to make this comeback. Um, and they did get two of them, one of them without him in the game, but I'm sure Rodgers could have done that as well. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, even early in the game, just getting that feeling of, like, I'm not really criticizing the quarterback that much. and. Look, part of it is that we don't want to critique him that much because we're kind of hanging everything on him. But I feel like we'd all be honest with Rodgers if he was letting us down, if he was doing things that warranted criticism. But for most of this game, I just didn't have too much of a problem with what he was doing. And that's not a usual feeling. Usually it's so easy for us, like, oh, the quarterback, the quarterback, this decision, this throw, get an average quarterback at all would have been fine. And this game felt like we had that at the very least. And it was everything else that wasn't working. But going forward, I think you trust this offensive line is going to run block better than it did. You trust that Brees Hall is not going to fumble again, that this defense is not going to be this bad. They have some issues, but we're not going to get this every week. Um, And you take all that with what Rodgers gave you last night. If that's the minimum he's going to give you in his first, you know, that being his first game back. I think you feel really good about it because, like I said, the biggest thing, there just wasn't that much that happened last night that felt like was his fault. So at the very least, if he's not subtracting from your team, that gives you a a high floor to build off of if you can get everything else right around them, which they will uh, going forward. So I I really like the way that he played, and it it gives me a lot of optimism going forward. That was the biggest question. That's what everyone talked about. What Aaron Rodgers are you going to get? And I – I like the way he played, you know, eight yards per attempt, only one sack for five yards. So over seven yards per play when he dropped back, that's pretty good. The only problem, he only dropped back 22 times. So you're going to have to give him more chances than that for him to make plays. So really encouraged by his debut. That's the biggest positive out of this by far. Yeah. I mean, when you look like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, even if this is what you're going to get from Aaron Rodgers, which I think you're going to get better games than this, obviously, but even if this is it, it's going to be, you know, a a pedestrian, you know, eight to 10 yards per attempt and maybe push it down the field once or twice, but it's going to be more game managerial just because he's 40 years old and is coming off a career altering injury and whatever, like jets should win a lot of games like that. Like I, I, I think, Aaron played well enough to win games. Not last night, not in a, in what turned into a shootout in what what, you know, 
Brees fumbling obviously was was bad and not. I mean, bad. let's put it this way: like the performance he gave last night. If he did that every week last season, yeah, exactly. How many of those games did the Jets win? Exactly. Like I, I think he, and and I don't expect that to be the best for Aaron Rodgers. Like you said, I I expect right. there to be far better games when everybody's on the same page. When you have a healthy Mike Williams, maybe not on a snap count. Although I don't know. Like I I said it a thousand times during the offseason. What if Alan Lazard is like back to being? you know, league average deep threat, Alan Lazard, just because he's got Aaron Rodgers now. I don't know. It's I'm still annoyed at that first drop, though. The first drop was <laughs> that was bad. I, I, but I think if you get that from Aaron Rodgers, this kind of game managerial experience with the glimpses of greatness, like the hard count, that's that should be more than enough with the talent the Jets have, not only in the run game, but also on the defensive side of the ball. Did those two things exist last night? No. Will they hopefully exist throughout the year? Yes. And I would expect them to get better and improve and whatever. But I I thought Aaron was completely fine. I know people kind of dogged on him for the throw on fourth down to Garrett. It was not a great throw. I thought the defense, quite frankly, got there early. Um, But outside of that, the interception was... I think he probably wants the interception back. I didn't think it was terrible tip drill, whatever, but it was not. It wasn't the best. great. It's not no. really an interceptor interception worthy kind of throw. It was no, more of a bad break. No, so you know it. It that that happens. That's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, for a guy that hadn't played football in 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 what twenty months or whatever, like I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good, and you saw glimpses it was not only the hard count but you saw even the first completion of the night to garrett going deeper down the sideline there i i you saw it it's still in there and to me the most the thing that makes me feel the best is i watched that atlanta game and kirk cousins looks terrible and aaron Rodgers does not look like kirk cousins so that at least is giving me some hope for the future here that it could be worse in terms of this whole Achilles old quarterback thing. It literally could be worse because another team is going through that right now. Agreed. Yeah. And I, I'm very encouraged. I think any Jets fan who watched it should be uh, based on him, other stuff, not as encouraging, but you know, looking forward uh, to Tennessee next week. I think, you know, you don't want to overlook them. They should have had a win last week. Uh, you know, couple what they have block punt and a pick six. The Titans very much outplayed the Bears and should have won, but so they're not a team to overlook, especially on the road in their home opener. Like you said, two zero and one teams. Desperation brings out some crazy stuff on both sides. We'll see what happens. I don't think any game should be considered a gimme, especially for a team that hasn't won a game yet with this quarterback or this team. So. Yeah, but the, talent-wise, you expect it to be better the next few weeks. And and we talked about this going in. If they lose this game, this is going to be the sample of the whole season for seven days. And all these things are going to be terrible. All these other things are going to be great. Stuff is going to change and develop throughout the year. Um, so just remember that. And I, I'm trying to convince myself of that now. I struggle with that during the game. But I've come to my senses a little bit this it, morning. It, it really – it is – it is. It's absolutely not the end of the world in no. any sense of the matter. Uh, again, you look at the, the upcoming schedule of, of Tennessee and New England and then Minnesota. It's like, okay, can we – Sam looked great. Just going to say it. Just going to put it on the internet. We did. Sam, Sam was ripping it. Proud of, proud of our boy. However, you would, you would like to win that game, right? Like I'd say yeah. it's, 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 it's a team you're – you're more talented then, but, but Tennessee, New England, Denver, I think everybody still is going to want that Denver game I, for, for Hackett. You know, Rogers is going to want that Denver game for Hackett, given that he didn't get to play in the game last year. I'm sure that's going to be blown up again. And he is going to make a bigger deal out of it because he didn't get to participate in the first round. I just, I think you, you should be on paper. You should be four and one. And I would have told you, entering last night, on paper, the Jets should be 4-1 and one following the fifth game. 
I think you have to be three and two. Being under 500 following this stretch would be bad. So I'm even building in a Sam Darnold masterclass or a you know New England snake bite game. Whatever, whatever hits. I don't know. Like Tennessee has talent. Tony Pollard looked really, really good against the Bears. They have an offensive line. They have Jeffrey Simmons that the offense that the Jets offensive line is going to have to contend with. They spent a lot of money on Legereus Steen. They spent a lot of money on Calvin Ridley. They spent, you know, DeAndre Hopkins a, a lot of money to keep him around. They have players at skill positions that the Jets are going to have to contend with this week. They also have Will Levis, who looked atrocious. So that's hopefully something that the Jets can take advantage of. They did not put any pressure on Brock Purdy. You saw what happened when the Bears put pressure on Will Levis, and maybe the greatest meme in NFL history has come out of it. I... They just have to be better across the board. I think everything has to be better. I think the offensive play calling can be better. I think the defensive in-game adjustments can be better. I think Rodgers can be better. I think the defense as a whole can be better. It just, you got punched in the mouth by the best team in football. Was this in the realm of possibility? Yeah. Did it happen the way we thought it was going to? No, and I think that's why we have maybe a little bit of a sour taste in our mouth this morning. But it is absolutely not the end of the world by any stretch of the the word there. No, I mean, Rodgers, I, I, I kind of didn't like hearing him say this because it was almost like he was anticipating this exact scenario. But he said it in uh, his interview. He said it in multiple interviews, but I know the one with Alex Smith that I was watching, yep. you know, after this week one game, they're either going to be the same old Jets or they're going to go win the Super Bowl. It's the former. They lost, and it wasn't pretty. So, But he said it, it, he's more interested in how they respond to that than how they rise to that occasion because that's that's the grind of a season. And he said it you know, talking about his old Green Bay teams. The, the team he won the Super Bowl with was not the team he went 15-1 with in 2011. It was the 10-6 and six wild card team. He said how a lot of the best teams – are the ones that find find their stride mid season, late season, and get hot going into the playoffs. It's not necessarily how you start in the beginning or what your overall regular season picture looks like. It's get in there and how do you look at that point when the playoffs arrive? And uh, this is a team that I expect to you know have some growing pains. They have guys coming off injuries. They have a lot of new additions that are trying to gel. Uh, so I expect them to go through some of this, maybe the start of the season isn't the way we expect it. Maybe they're five and three, four and four. I don't know, but I do think they're the type of team that once they do get it together, could rip off one of those late season runs where they go into the playoffs, seven and one, five wins in a row, whatever it may be. And then by the time the playoffs get here, maybe they didn't have the full regular season you wanted, but uh, they're hot going in. And I don't think any, any of our preseason ambitions should be ruled out no. because of this game. If you no, predicted 12 I, and 5, 13 and 4, I predicted 12 and 5. I'm going to stick with that after this game. So I'm not even saying rule all that out because of this game. But at the same time, I am saying, hey, this team isn't perfect the way that maybe some of us may have shaped it to be going into this season. Uh, and maybe things aren't going to be as smooth sailing as you expected. They still could be, but maybe not. So just prepare for that and understand that it is a long road and this is the type of team that is built to finish strong, even if they have to go through some bumps along the way. But with that being said, don't be 0-2 coming out of Nashville, going into that Thursday night game against New England. Don't do that. We're going to draw the line there. That would be really bad. That would be really bad. But I, I again, we're – Try to. It's hard to be realistic in the heat of the moment when you're just, you know, you've waited. I mean, Jet fans have waited a, a full year. It's not like there was anything to watch last year. It was 364 days of, of waiting for, for that moment. Plus and, the the six months before that. It was really yeah. 18 months. It was really 18 game. months. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to wait 18 months for something and – to just get punched in the mouth. And and like it, the as it was happening, I think I was so frustrated because 
this is a defensive identity team and we think this is the best defense in football and look at all the talent, yada, yada, yada. And they just sucked. And I, I think that's why I was so demoralized. Yeah, because that's like what we're supposed it's to, hard to watch. On. It's hard yeah. to watch. It's hard to watch. And it's hard after all the buildup of we finally have a quarterback, we finally have an offense. And then for the defense to be the one to just lay an egg, bizarro world completely bizarre world and it's it's weird to experience but at the end of the day it can't change your opinion at all the jets lost a game in week one with a, an almost entirely new offensive line with a new quarterback with a completely changed defensive line to a team that went to overtime of the super bowl and was relatively unchanged on the road I like Across I don't w- w- when you lay it out like that it's okay. It's not the end of the world. This guy is not falling. Everybody's going to act like this guy is falling. This guy is not falling primarily because we got the answer we needed in that the Jets have a quarterback. Yes. That's it. That is the end of the sentence. The Jets lost a game to the best team in football. Period. The second sentence of this recap is the Jets have a quarterback, period, the end. That's it. He's going to keep them in games. He's going to win them multiple games this year. And whatever questions that you had unanswered for the last 18 months got answered. Was he perfect? No. Is it going to get better? Yes. Does he look competent? Absolutely. And that's all the Jets should need, especially when you look at last year, how they won seven games with the poo-poo platter of the worst NFL quarterback room of all time. The Jets have a quarterback. They're 0-1. It happens. Do you think, uh, you know, what other good teams are? uh, The Kansas City Chiefs started 0-1 last year. They won the Super Bowl. Do you think the Baltimore Ravens are panicking right now? I don't think the Baltimore Ravens care. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the best way to leave it, honestly, is just, just the way you put it. Those two sentences, I think, are all we really need to take out of this. Unless, unless you want to panic, unless you want to be negative, we we could go on and on. But yeah, I don't, I don't think any of us want to do that. So I think the best way to come out of it. No, is and I think it's I think it's wrong said. to do that. I think it's yeah. wrong to do that. It is just it is it is a it's a bad use of energy on the the morning after week one to just be all doom and gloom about this. Did it suck to get punched in the mouth? Absolutely. Was that any fun at all outside of the seven minute drive and the one free play? Not really. But the one free play and the seven minute drive happened. And guess what? That's never happened before. So we should just take that and move on. Perfect. I I agree. That's it. So that that'll Michael Michael and the and the Jets X Factor crew is gonna gonna be breaking it down all week before we turn the base to Tennessee. We'll be we'll be back. Thursday for a, a, a Tennessee preview. I think, uh, listen, it's not a must win, but I'd really like to have it. So we'll, we'll dive into the tape. We'll recap this one and a, a little bit more and get into a little bit of a Tennessee preview later this week. Uh, any parting words from you before we wrap it up here, Michael? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say these words. You saw some of my texts last night. I was sleeping for the fourth quarter even ended. I did not see that garbage time drive with Tyrod. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, you look, but you looked okay. You looked but fine. I, I look back. Tyrod, we got a good backup. We got a good backup. But there's 16 games left. This is one out of 17. The Jets were going to lose this year. And we all knew that when they lose, it was very likely that one of those losses was going to be this game. Not as pretty of a loss as we may have hoped to have think there are some real issues to monitor but at the same time the biggest question this franchise has had for five plus decades i think you answered that so we'll figure out the rest as it goes along i think a lot of those questions will be answered in a positive fashion over these next four games here but um the biggest one is answered for now and i think we should all take that with us into the next few weeks so i'll leave it with that just be happy the Jets have a quarterback. Haven't been able to say that ever in our lives. So 
That's that's it. That's that's all we can leave you with. Uh, we'll be back later this week. Keep it locked. JackSaxFactor.com. Everybody over there will be breaking down the tape from from a demoralizing 32-19 uh, week one loss. But the sky is not falling. No chicken littles here. We move on. On to Tennessee. <laughs>